talking about Tsunami Lang since this is the most topic. We've been talking since the first day of Respina, started from Wednesday. And it's good because we have a lot of experts here, and especially for this lesson learned, um, Respina was honored by some experts from Indonesia and from Philippines. Really? And we are happy and honored because the laundry lung doctor is here right now. I would like to invite Dr. Muhammad Fahmi Alatas as the laundry lung doctor. The second expert, she's a microbiologist, Dr. Vera Ibrahim. She's from uh, Cipta Magna Kusuma National Hospital. Please welcome to the stage, Dr. Vera. Good morning. Very nice to meet you. And the third expert from physical medicine and rehabilitation knowledge uh, field, Dr. Anita Ratmawati. She's, uh, she has the same name with me, but different age. You know. Dr. Fahmi, since you have a lot of experience with the uh, victims with uh, the tsunami lung, can you tell us what is really the tsunami lung? Well, uh, as, uh, as we um, alerted, uh, Dr. Anita told us, told us before, and then from the good uh, heart beating uh, pictures before that, Tsunami could happen at any time in our country. So, uh, Tsunami Lang, uh, only some journals state that Tsunami Lang is uh, aspiration pneumonia, exactly, uh, caused by the aspiration of salt water uh, plus combined with mud and uh, polymicrobials. Uh, we know that uh, December 22, last year, Tsunami hit uh, Banten and Lampung. So, uh, by the time our colleagues, uh, pulmonologists there, uh, told us that uh, there, there are four, exactly four uh, survivors of uh, tsunami uh, admitted already in their hospital. So, uh, unfortunately, because of, uh, you know, the end year uh, holiday, something like that, so delay, uh, December 27, uh, we, uh, from the from Persahabatan Hospital, um, went back, went to uh, Banten with a uh, team, uh, with ambulance and uh, some uh, three bronchoscopes we brought. One uh, uh, already uh, from our uh, company um, friends, something like that, and then two uh, portable bronchoscopes. So this is uh, one of case I, uh, we would like to show you. There are a man, 50 years old man, was struck by overload sea water while was sitting for dinner with his wife uh, at, at their house. Uh, both were sink on the, that uh, uh, water. Uh, the wife was found two days uh, after, two days later. Uh, of course, uh, she died already. This man was uh, unconscious, then found by the rescue team and dragged to the, the uh, hospital. Then uh, they admit the, this man to the ICU. Then uh, it's getting worse. Uh, he got uh, shortness of breath and the chest X-ray. Maybe we can we can see the chest X-ray slide. Yes, this is uh, when the physical exam when we found him. Wells on the both side. So a patchy lung, patchy infiltrate in uh, both of the lungs. Next slide. So our diagnosis was aspiration pneumonia by that time. Slide, please. So, uh, yeah, we do bronchoscopic uh, bronchial washing to this uh, patient as uh, all of our pulmonologists aware what kind of uh, fluid we got from this uh, airway. So from that, um, maybe, uh, sorry, this is not pointing. From the right, uh, right side, up lower right, uh, below right side, we can see some like uh, ants or insects, something or beetles. 
is from uh, drawn back from the from his uh, lung. Next slide, please. So this is the short video of the our finding inside the airway. Yeah, the one do proboscopy should know that this uh, not only sputum but also uh, mixed by uh, some sands, uh, black uh, dust or something like this. Yeah, next slide please. So this is uh, the photograph of uh, bronchoscopy. Then laboratory confirmed after a uh, few days later, uh, Asinatobacter baumannii with some uh, antibiotic resistance. Slide. And this is uh, two pictures comparing before and uh, a day after bronchoscopic uh, bronchotel for these patients. Before we proceed further, uh, Dr. Vera, uh, we would like to know, can you just please explain us about the characteristics? What are the specific characteristics of microorganisms uh, that common found in a tsunami? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think uh, because the tsunami even also not very frequent, is uh, the data from the literature of publication is not uh, too many. So that, uh, the risk of the pneumonia associated with the uh, tsunami, it depends on the cause. For example, uh, in a pulmonary infection, in this case, of course, uh, uh, there are too many persons that aspirate all the content of the maybe seawater, fresh water, and other things that contain in the tsunami water. So, uh, that's determine what the, is the content of the water could infect the uh, person or the victim. So uh, in this slide, I think we can see that uh, there are uh, many of bacteria that uh, always we can uh, find in the person a victim of the near drawing uh, associated pneumonia. Is the uh, aerobic bacteria gram negative uh, like aeromonas? And there are also Bulgogaria pseudomale. For this bacteria, it depends the area which the tsunami occurred. For example, in the uh, Aceh tsunami, which is the that area is endemic for the Bulgogaria pseudomale. So we detect uh, uh, in the last tsunami is uh, several or uh, uh, victim that have a um, tsunami lung with the Bulgogaria pseudomale, and there are another also, it depends the content of the water. This is, uh, we can see the fresh water is what bacteria we can find, and the salt water also, uh, they have a different pattern of the bacteria, what is the, the uh, content in that water. So, uh, you mentioned it, it depends on the area, the characteristic yeah. of the microorganism. Yeah. So, uh, have you have ever mapping a map of um, micro? It's not a, an easy word, right? Yeah. But um, maybe from the microbiology point of view, have you ever been um, a mapping for some certain area that maybe uh, more often have disaster? Uh, that already have a map of microorganisms. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we have no map in Indonesia. In Indonesia. In Indonesia. We just know that uh, in certain area, if they are uh, endemic for certain bacteria, like I said, that in the Southeast Asia is endemic for the Bulgogaria pseudomale. So we know that the possibility that the person have a pneumonia at that area, it could be caused by that uh, bacteria. Or uh, maybe we can think about the uh, if the uh, water that the person uh, submersion in a certain area that uh, have unconnected the sewage facility and another thing, so we can uh, suspect that, that what bacteria, it could be cause the infection. So uh, in the tsunami survivor, so we can find uh, generally is polymicrobial. So there are uh, many other bacteria 
even we can detect the bacteria that uh, have a multi resistant if of course the water is uh, be, uh, to become the uh, uh, the field with which is the bacteria multi resistant have already there and also there are a fungi and we have to uh, follow or observe after the event because the bacterial infection is uh, faster to become uh, have an onset but the fungi is later or more slowly than the bacteria so after the survivor pass the uh, acute phase so we have to follow them because maybe in later uh, develop a fungi infection yeah that so that would be a big challenge because not only bacterial infection but later on the fungal infection will be more complicated in the management, I think. Before we uh, further go, um, I would like to ask the Paramita because we are talking about how to clean the airway from all the debris that inhale uh, through the airway of the victims. Uh, what is the role of um, rehabilitation actually for the uh, victim of the tsunami? Uh, in uh, in rehabilitation perspective, uh, we support the pulmonologist or, or the physician that uh, take care of the first care of patient with tsunami lung. Uh, and our problem in view of rehabilitation medicine is uh, the problem with aspiration and inhalation, severe aspiration and inhalation injuries. That that is because the irritant particle can cause severe injury to the respiratory tract that uh, it results in severe inflammation of the respiratory tract, severe airway obstruction and tend to uh, fibrotic not only in the respiratory tract but in the lung too. And we know that a patient has high sputum production and retention that makes him difficult in expectoration. It also because uh, maybe the survivor not only from aspiration and inhalation of the irritant particle and toxic particle, but uh, maybe from multiple trauma that uh, compromise the ventilation of the patient. So the patient have not only oxygenation dysfunction, but severe ventilation dysfunction too. We know some patients with uh, spinal cord injury and chest trauma in this condition too, brain injury and further complication that it will make the management more difficult. So, uh, we support in airway clearance management of the remaining debris and hyperstration that include uh, as always, per percussion and vibration in gentle. Uh, and we know a cough. Cough is the most important for all person. And in this case, usually cough is not effective or weak. So we must uh, increase first or support first how the patient can breathe uh, normally or uh, enhance the breathing pattern of this patient with a method airway cycle breathing technique and it can follow by how can we support patient can huffing and coughing effectively and sometimes we it's must for a support audience, huh? right away they are huffing and huffing <laughs> <laughs> maybe they are practicing coughing yeah because in view of rehab uh, effective coughing is must uh, begin with half with yeah. open practicing closing. now. Are your coughing is effective enough? <laughs> right? Can we do? Okay. With deep breath and relax, and we do <sighs> with open glottis. That is half because half can uh, support uh, the mucus to the proximal proximal bronchus so if we can effectively and we finish with coughing yeah 
in patient with weak cough, uh, this is a more effective uh, method uh, because sometimes it cannot do spontaneous cough. And if the patient is very weak, maybe we uh, support with aspecting exercise for impact uh, respiratory muscle and uh, and support the compliance of the lung so they can uh, support the cough effective too. And if we have an equipment that uh, modern equipment that uh, mechanical insufflation exfoliation technique with cough assist, this technique usually must be combined with uh, conservative postural drainage with some precaution and this uh, patient because the accumulation of inhaled tsunami debris in small airway. I think, uh, yeah, so actually there are some simple, easy uh, techniques to, uh, to enhance the airway cleanliness of the patient. How about if there is no rehab doctor? We hope because we know physiatrist is very limited and not all the area of disease might be ha having a physiatrist. So what we should do for the community? Thank you, Dr. Anita. This uh, uh, our uh, discussion before that uh, in uh, suddenly after the after the disaster, maybe with a minimal health facility and health uh, resources, we can do uh, community-based rehabilitation. We call it community-based rehabilitation. The principle, at my, it was very important in community-based rehabilitation. It teach and educate. All participants can we uh, educate to do a simple training and breathing training and how to do half and cough effectively, how to do chest expansion exercise is also for the preventive pulmonary uh, complication because we know that sometimes it is a sudden, sudden airway uh, obstruction or uh, inflammation that in the first time the survivor is like healthy person but because of inhale irritant or uh, yeah toxic irritant it make a complication in long term effect so this uh, simple technique can we do in community to do breathing chest expansion and half cup effective to improve oxygenation and compliance of the patient, of the person. Okay, uh, I back to Dr. Fahmi. From your experience in Banten, the, the most uh, experienced, right? Um, what was the most difficult condition you faced while uh, treating the patient with tsunami? Is there any difficulties from Zero level to ten level, maybe the ten level. Well, <coughs> uh, basically, we are doing what we are doing uh, um, daily um, activity bronchoscopy. But uh, the specific things of a lung, tsunami lung, the the worst case was uh, uh, a man. He is a pillar keeper, then drawn uh, on the on the pillar. <clears throat> then brought to the hospital and getting worse uh, of oxygenation, then they, um, our friends, they put them on uh, mechanical ventilation. That is the, uh, well, I'm sorry to, to know that because uh, once they uh, intubate the patient, they put on machine, so machine will draw the positive, uh, will, will push the positive pressure. So that positive pressure will bring down the mud and uh, soil and dust, anything more deeper to the alveoli, maybe. So that, that is the, the, the most difficult thing. We cannot provide uh, as good as uh, bronchial toilet uh, as the other patients, uh, which were not on ventilation. So um, the patients, unfortunately, the patient passed away one day after uh, we did the bronchoscopy, but uh, there is some review of the 
Rosen and uh, blood gas analysis. Uh, yes, uh, but uh, that that I think it, that is the most uh, difficult. Uh, once the, the you put on uh, positive pressure, it is difficult to us to uh, draw back the uh, yeah. other thing. So it was uh, like a dilemma for a medical practice, you know, yes. because uh, in other hand we have to treat the respiratory failure, and but in other hand I should uh, said that we just are pushing down all the debris right. to uh, the lower respiratory uh, tract. Right. So that. From your experience, it was the most challenging, yeah. Yeah, because we, we know that uh, it, <coughs> we cannot draw, draw the, the, the particulate back to, uh, I mean, uh, outside the lungs, because it's already uh, well, maybe sedimented on the deeper. So the bronchoscopy has to be done as fast as, as possible? Uh, ideally, as early as possible. So, yeah. The earlier, the better result. Even though we have to s struggle with the patient with the mechanical ventilation, but the bronchoscopy has to be done as early as possible. Even perhaps before the ventilation. Before, just before, before. the ventilation. Okay. So that's the note. Uh, it is an important message for us. And um, I go back to uh, Dr. Vera. Uh, we are we're talking about. Uh, um, some characteristic of the bacteria, and also you have mentioned about the fungal um, uh, infection possibility. Um, is there any uh, data about the resistance uh, incidence of uh, antimicrobial for um, infection that occurred from tsunami? Uh, unfortunately, we have no data because uh, of course, we are from the microbiology, not in hope, and when tsunami, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, there are the event tsunami. So I think maybe next we have to involve and to uh, learn about uh, what is the pattern of in our uh, tsunami. But um, of course, I don't hope that a tsunami even will become again. Yeah. But uh, of course, before, before, because uh, in the environment, there are uh, not just bacteria, there are also so many uh, fungi that uh, we can find at the uh, environment. So the possibility of the, the fungi infection is they also uh, have a uh, resistance to the fungi because there are uh, some of the fungi that uh, maybe restic uh, they are already intrinsically resistant that uh, could be uh, difficult for us to treat them even we have an antifungal like ampotericin or another thing so uh, of course uh, we have to uh, identify uh, the first what is the fungal that infect and then we uh, see the pattern of the sensitivity of the uh, for the antifungal Doctor, how fast can we identify the fungal? Because it is important for the physician to prescribe the antifungal as soon as possible, right? So how fast yeah. it takes? How fast the, um, with uh, conventional, uh, of course, if we look the first with the mic microscopic and also the cancer, it could be a uh, five day or more because it depends the fungi that grow growing and growing of the fungi. Of course, it is different uh, uh, the long of the growth of the fungi. So you do, th do you think the laboratory has to be around the disaster area? If there is no access from this disaster area to the laboratory, what should be done? Yes, uh, of course, ideally, uh, the laboratory uh, include in the team that in the area because uh, that identify what is the possibility. It could be uh, occur in the maybe infection later after the event or maybe before the event. Uh, we are from the laboratory, maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe the government have and make and like a uh, surveying the detection for its uh, area we have uh, like you before uh, ask about the mapping of yes. the uh, yes. what is organism in our area because i know uh, i saw uh, one slide from the netherlands so 
they uh, collect the data from the uh, victim, uh, the uh, nail drawing at uh, that area. So, but they also detected for its like the liver or leg and etc. Uh, what is the uh, microorganism that related with the nail drawing victim? So uh, we can prepare what uh, we have to do. Uh, uh, we face to the uh, the problem. Yeah. So 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 this is another important message for us. That's why we call it laboratory of disaster because we not only having the bad news, but uh, we can do more research to have a lot more data, just like from microbiology point of view, so we can make better uh, guidelines perhaps, or uh, enrich the disaster management of our country in the perfection of, uh, perspective of uh, respiratory uh, care. And, um, I would like, we still have the best for last. I would like to invite our special guest from Philippines. Please welcome Professor Dolpo, we are from Filipino, Philippines, Biornia. Welcome to Lesson Learned 2019. I'm glad to have you here. Please have a seat. Uh, we've been talking about Tsunami Lang from some experts here, uh, from their own experience. And I know you are a disaster expert and uh, have a lot of experience in this, in this field. And uh, we would like to uh, hear to listen from you. And uh, I, I know you have already the slide. Uh, please give us some overview about the disaster, especially Tsunami Lang. Actually, uh, in the Philippines, because of our internal system, tsunami land does not appear in our uh, reimbursement. In this slide, this was taken from the book of uh, it's a 2019 disaster respiratory uh, diseases that was based by or at least written by a lot of. Uh, the Japanese physicians, pulmonary physicians, who were involved in their uh, tsunami as well as uh, some of the disasters that they saw. This is uh, published by uh, Spring. And uh, you will notice that uh, more than 80% of your patients or more than 80% of the patients do not reach the hospital because they die, they drown, okay? Uh, some of these patients will have crossing injuries and up to now, up to 2017, they have been found some of the uh, uh, other patients who were missing, okay? There were 15,000 uh, patients that were seen during the tsunami and uh, and this was the breakdown. You'll notice that pre-tsunami, uh, the usual statistical data shown in this slide did not increase even after the tsunami. It's just that after the, the tsunami, you will notice that uh, patients who had exacerbation of their asthma or COPD, and other comorbidities may have increased a little, but interstitial lung disease, pneumonia, as well as uh, patients who develop ARDS later on became a problem. Because uh, there are three phases in this uh, respiratory disease that happens, okay? The first 24 hours and 48 or up to 72 hours, will be the deluge of patients who have near drowning uh, problem. And uh, most of these patients, because of the aspiration, as what was uh, said before, it's a mixed type of aspiration, including all the debris and sands from the bottom of the ocean. And this is the problem that 
you have a mixed type of infection, both bacterial, and the bacterial are the necrotizing type of bacteria that you get, gram-negative. And uh, um, also, that was also presented a while ago, we will notice that the fungus that, used, that was initially um, described in the other areas in, the, in Southern Africa, as well as in India, and then in Indonesia, were almost the same. The same type of bacteria and or uh, Bamani, strep, and, and uh, streptophanos, as well as other uh, type of fungus. The fungus that we get are usually aspergillosis and or uh, other types of new, even uh, Legionella was seen in some of these uh, cases, about three or four. And uh, usually the presentation is your, your broad spectrum antibiotic and steroid then do not help the patient in the first five days. So you should already think of possible underlying fungal infection. This is the reason why initially in Japan they started with uh, um, anti-fungal, but since it did not respond initially, after five days they have to add voriconazole, another anti-fungal that uh, probably uh, or at least it improved some of the patients and that this was the reason for their survival. So when we look at the lessons learned, next, uh, these are the cases, next. So some of these patients, on the second or third week, they now develop uh, problems because they have uh, abscesses in their brain. So if it is not treated early, then eventually it will reach the central nervous system. So the, the lessons learned actually is that in the tr uh, strategies, we have to be proactive, meaning to say that we bring the laboratory, we bring the pharmacist in the disaster area, because these are the people who can probably help you. But more importantly, when we look at the um, the possibilities when in, in terms of contingency, we don't only prepare for the, the usual conventional, but also prepare for a crisis type if there is a surge of more than 20% of the possible uh, victims that we will see. Also, uh, I think what they have seen, even in the first world countries, in uh, what happened in in Katrina and whatever. When we bring patients from the disaster area to the different uh, hospitals, they must be with the patient all the time. And this data, there should be a central AI is also important because uh, it is hard for uh, the hospitals when they help and then they lose their ventilators and the other equipments that was brought with the patients. So that's important. Contracts must be signed with the pharmaceutical industries that if they help, then they should also be ready for surge capacity. When surge capacity, because the other problem with uh, uh, patients or the survivors when they are evacuated, the problem in the evacuation area, if this is not monitored, then when one gets caught, everybody will have it because of the spread of infection. So there should be surveillance even in the areas where you have the evacuation. Uh, prevention and immunization, especially to the victims and the survivors must be uh, given. And of course, when we talk about treatment, there is a scarcity of data, and therefore, this was the reason why in early part, steroids were used together with the broad spectrum antibiotic. 
whether we should start fungicides early and the broad spectrum ones, uh, we don't know yet because the data is, is still very scarce. This is the reason why there are just recommendations and there are no specific guidelines yet. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, Prof. Rodolfo, I would like to ask you a comment about what we were talking about, the uh, timing of application of mechanical ventilation while the patient's airway not been cleared yet. Uh, in their experience in Japan is that from the time the patient has been intubated, once they're transferred to the center, bronchos bronchoscopy must be done daily, bronchial washing, and uh, some of these patients, they have an average of five bronchial washings uh, during the time of their admissions before their lungs clear up. Okay, just uh, for me, how many patients you have from uh, Bantan? How many bronchoscopy you've done <laughs> in that disaster time? Well, um, <coughs> yes, uh, as I told you, unfortunately, we have only three. Three, three cases okay. of survivors. Uh, actually, four cases of survivors, but the one, the one is a female, 80 something, well, some, uh, 50 years or something like that, but mm -hmm. uh, severely traumatic mm -hmm. and uh, multiple fracture, and uh, uh, the family declared not to do any, any other intervention. But for the three of the patients, uh, one is uh, intubated. One is intubated and then uh, given uh, positive pressure. So that is the most uh, difficult to do. Yeah, the, the case you mentioned before. All right, I would like, we still have time. I'd like to ask some of the audience, if you have any question for all our experts, please welcome to uh, deliver your question. If there is any. Oh yeah, yes, please. Yeah, Philippi. Uh, yeah, the big problem of how to maintain the infection, sometimes we only uh, do the empiric therapeutic procedure. And I think that we should have the data of the cases of bacteria. My question, uh, do you have collected uh, some agent or pathogen uh, for any cases of uh, drawing in entity in Philippines or Japan or others, so we can use as a reference for a mission like Dr. Ferrato that we do not have the data at this moment. So if you have the data, the good data, I think we can yeah. share with the people. Thank you. The current recommendation now in Japan is to do the uh, DNA testing from the bronchial uh, secretions. So you have almost immediate, within 24 hours, you have the identified the, the pathogen already. Because if we wait sometimes for the cultures, then uh, the patient is dead, the culture will come Not out. Not already yet. <laughs> yeah. It's common problem, yeah? So D DNA testing for PCR. Yeah. Have you ever yeah. done here in Indonesia? Did, did I answer your question first? Yeah, yeah, I think this year we still do not have a proper policy of uh, therapeutic, so we should have a culture, no molecular, because molecular we have no data, uh, we cannot use the PCR uh, as base for therapeutic procedure, so I think the culture and of bacteria, what kind of bacteria and susceptibility pattern is very, very important, yeah. So. Yeah, the, the epidemiolo epidemiologist now in Japan is that in the site of this disaster, they already get their, their cultures there and then uh, inform the, the hospitals. Uh, because of their AI, they have good communication. So the communication is, uh, is uh, re uh, brought to the other hospitals and those who are treating the patients. So, and it's part of their news now. Of uh, coordination and communication yes. issue, right? Thank you, Prof. Yes. And um, but before we go, uh, come to the end of the session, I would I would like to ask your uh, final message for all of us, Dr. Fahmi. Yeah. Well, 
for the pulmonologist uh, view that uh, we must be aware, all of us, all of pulmonologists should be aware that we are living in the uh, country located inside in the Pacific Ring of Fire. So a uh, volcano can erupt at any moment. Uh, you said before, now, now it is happening in uh, uh, Bandung. Uh, so uh, volcano may lead to tsunami again then uh, we have to be prepared at any time. And uh, we, uh, I think uh, all pulmonologists, in, uh, especially in Prasapatan Hospital, and we do hope uh, for you guys and, and the peripheral uh, uh, hospital, uh, especially for the one located uh, close to the, the, the same. So uh, please be uh, ready uh, to, to handle the uh, disaster and uh, I think all of pulmonologists uh, I'm sure are already uh, ready to help. Ready to help. Yeah. Dr. Vera? Yes, I think the most important thing is maybe uh, in the microbiological perspective is we have to collect the uh, much as much as many the data from the event what is the organism that uh, could be influenced in the uh, pulmonary disease after the tsunami event? Uh, in this case, we have not the data, even uh, have already the Aceh tsunami assay and also a Banten, yeah. So I think in the uh, next, maybe we have to collect them and then we can better prepare to uh, manage the patient after disaster. What is your message for the clinician uh, to when they will prescribe the antimicrobial or antifungus? Of course, we have to know the patient of the uh, uh, organism and also the uh, susceptibility antimicrobial, and we have to prescribe the antibiotic that appropriate with the uh, cause of the infection. And uh, based on the data we collect, we can uh, build or establish the, uh, the guidance like for the empirical therapy. Mm -hmm. Yes, important issue. Dr. Anita, please. A uh, very important thing that uh, in this other area is uh, uh, we can uh, the, the doctor, uh, general practitioner doctor, can uh, uh, take the important role to do community-based rehabilitation to teach person, survivor, and all the community for a simple uh, breathing technique, simple chest therapy technique, and how to huff and cough effectively as a preventive rehabilitation, medical rehabilitation technique that can support uh, all the patient and the survivor in this afternoon. So should the physiatrist come at that area at early phase of disaster? I think if there is a team, as a disaster medical team, because uh, in many area in Indonesia, uh, physical medicine and rehabilitation doctor uh, usually come as a, a disaster team. And the first uh, we can do is always the community-based rehabilitation program to teach, train, teach, and train in group therapy. Yeah, because uh, for physiatrists, just as you saw in that video, the injury is not only in the respiratory system, but in, it involves some other system, organ system. Uh, some might be have a spinal cord injury, traumatic brain injury, uh, fractures, and so on. So there uh, will be much complicated with uh, such a patient with much more um, area that injured from disaster. So uh, rehabilitation point of view, uh, we have to take care of all the system, right, Dr. Anita? 
Professor Rodolfo, please give us some, uh, your final message. Thank you. Well, I am very glad that uh, this was the theme of your 2019 annual convention because every physician must be involved in disaster management. Meaning to say that every physician, or at least even at the, as early as the third year of medical school, we must be taught how to do triads and to become triads officers. So that because man-made or uh, natural disasters is with us every day since the time of Adam and Eve. And this is the reason why you will notice that research in these areas are not yet very uh, good. So it's, it's still young. This is the reason the younger individuals must be able to, to document and, and contribute. Because Respina started this, then you should have, you should be able, at least Respina should be able to collect at least to show also the, the Asia Pacific area that we have a contribution to what happened in Japan, to uh, Asia, to, to wherever. So that we become the leaders in this part of the world as far as disaster is concerned in terms of fire, volcano eruptions, as well as tsunami. So I, I agree, it should be taught to the medical school and be part of the curriculum as well. Thank you very much. Yes. Okay. Um, please slide, slide. Next slide. Yeah. So, I would like to um, summarize some points from our um, rich discussion this morning. That first, uh, from a point of terminology that we have to clean the area as early as possible. So the laundry of the lung is the first thing we have to do to save the patient. Yeah, not to just to save the lung, but to save the patient life. So please do it as early as possible. And it should be supported by system. Yeah, system. If there is no bronchial bronchoscopy team, that would be a big problem. So it's important issue for political issue for um, strategy to take care. And we would uh, um, discuss later in our uh, next first pass for making a good guidelines for uh, the victim of disaster. And also a mapping, a characteristic of the microorganism, pattern of the microorganism, bacteria, and also fungi. It's very important because it's different yeah, with the bacteria that we inhale from this room, <laughs> from our home, from even from the hospital, right, doctor? It's very different characteristic. So we have put in mind that it's a big challenge to treat that kind of infection that cause of such a bacteria of fungus. Not only in early treatment, but later of to, as uh, mentioned of Dr. Uh, Vera, that fungal infection uh, will be occur later not in the early phase. So it's, uh, we have to put in mind to think about the possibility of fungal infection for those patients. And uh, rehabilitation should involve in the early phase of a tsunami lung uh, victims. And we can, uh, in, uh, we can empower uh, the community, the general practitioners as well, because um, it is, uh, should be done every day, routine, maybe three times daily. And if there is some more complication about uh, some other injury, that um, worsen the patient ability to cough, to clear the airway, we have to do some more complicated techniques. So that's why physiatrists should be there as early as possible at early phase also. And message from uh, Prof. Rolfo, it's clear that there is some strategy, some issue that we have to overcome in this country. It's good because Respina has 
thoughts about this issue, and we yesterday we uh, had uh, discussed about that point. And um, uh, this is mutual meeting should be menelurkan. Bolehkah memakai istilah itu, Prof Minaldi? Menelurkan, yeah, produce something that uh, will manage the disaster uh, survivor, disaster victim, or community to survive from tsunami land. I think we are already at the end of the point. Thank you for our experts, Prof Rodolfo, Dr. Fahmi, as our laundry doctor. <laughs>